You are listening to Rewired and Inspired with Lily Beyond, episode 52. Welcome to the Mental Fitness School podcast, where we talk all things rewiring your brain to become the inspiring person you're meant to be inside out. And now to your host and favorite coach, Lily Beyond. Hey, I have to share this with you. I'm sitting here in our Cypress apartment overlooking golden fields, a lake and the ocean, thinking to myself, wow, how did I get here? What were all these decisions that need to happen for me, for us to end up in this exact space and time? It's just pure mind blowing if you think about it. Because for years, my biggest dream was to one day have an epic view, a super calm surrounding, be able to call myself an islander and live there with the love of my life, building my absolute dream business. And honestly, hey, years ago, if you would have asked me, I would have said, hey, yes, maybe in 10, 20, 30 years, someday this might be realistic. <laughs> But hey, being here five years into my decision of committing to my calling of becoming a life coach, starting my own business, deciding on my offer, what I want to do and doing whatever it takes to make that happen. Hey, let me tell you, things have shifted. And the good news is this is totally possible for you too. If you're currently at a point in your life and career where you feel yourself in a rut, not knowing how to get yourself out there, or you're really facing a plateau, a stagnation, being uninspired by what you're doing, or you're really on the verge of entering into a new season for yourself in your life, in your business. And in today's episode, I want to give you the source code, how to really make all that happen. I feel our whole society, all social media is packed with inspiration. There are so many things we can share, so many quotes, so many amazing movies are made of exceptional role models unlocking their true potential and possibilities. So on some level, we should get it by now. And still, people are suffering by their own thinking. And what I want to share with you today is the key differentiator that determines if you will ever get out of your own self-pity or if you are in fact thriving and becoming an example of what's possible. So we have a lot of inspiration out there, but what this really aims for is mindfulness. Mindfulness essentially is an act of awareness. It is becoming aware of things like you're looking at night out of your window and you are stunned by the blackness and someone is pointing out the stars in the sky and suddenly you see the little dots and you see beautiful formations. You might even see Milky Way and all the beauty that lies within this level of awareness of honing in and focusing your view on one particular thing. This is what I define as mindfulness. This is the act of awareness. What coaching is, in my understanding, is to guide people into action. Because we can and we should have all the awareness in the world, but we also need to be able to guide ourselves into action. I love this metaphor when you're looking at life like a jar of jam. You have a jar here and before you have self-awareness, you are in the jar. You're in the jar, it's sticky, it might smell delicious like strawberries, it might be even comfortable. You might not know where the outer boundaries are of this jar because you are deeply in it. So what self-awareness does, it helps you get out of your own jar, which represents your life, and you're able to look at the label. You are able to say, hey, this is strawberry jam. You are able to see the jar. Is it long? Is it short? Is it bulky? What's the lid like? So you're making yourself aware of yourself. That's the number one thing we need to see that you are not your life. You are not your circumstances. There is this jar and there is you. And being able to see yourself from a different perspective, this is what essentially differentiates us from everything else in the world. This is our superpower. And if you're familiar, with the World Economic Future Skill Report, you know that reflecting, being able to reflect on something is one of those future skills. So we need to learn it. If you're an adult today, you never learned that in school. So we have to really learn that skill as an adult. Be able to reflect, to see something from a different perspective, to be able to turn it, to twist it, be able to guide your thought process towards seeing the stars in the night sky. So you have to know your map. You have to know your jaw. You have to know how to zoom out of your situation and see 
things differently. This is mindfulness. Becoming aware of what is happening. You're not in your thoughts anymore. Like imagine you're in the ocean and you're in the waves and they hit you and they come and they go and whoosh, another wave in your face and you're in it. Awareness on the other hand is really be able to zoom out and anticipate. Oh, there is another wave. Look at that. And you look at the motion, feeling the movement of the wave. This is awareness. So what is now happening when you're having this awareness? You are knowing things, you are observing things, you are able to see things differently. What good coaching now is, is the doing part, the guiding into inspired action. And action can also be thought action, because I want you, as my future client, to be able to see how you can apply what you know effectively. And that's the thing. In a perfect world, you might think that you want to have all those routines, be able to moderate your impulsive actions, always have a strategic plan of everything that's happening, always being on top of things, always know how to accommodate what people need. But if you are human and you have a dose of drama, a dose of density and allowing yourself to fail, then this is it what really makes you a human. So if you like being a human, coaching is for you. And this is also the reason why coaches need other coaches, because we are always also human. Just to clear it up, we are not saints. I'm not a saint. Of course, I also have coaches for myself. And I know my mentors also all have coaches. There is nothing wrong with the system. It's just proving that we are all human. Human. And this is just beautiful. So when we're talking now about unlocking possibilities, it is first making yourself aware, yes, I am a human and I have certain thought patterns that just default from time to time. There's nothing wrong with that. So what you have to do next now is allow yourself to be guided into inspired action. And a wonderful tool to play around with that is the number one secret power tool, which is the mental scale where you can rate yourself from one to ten and make even the most intangible circumstance measurable. We can use this mental scale to quantify essentially everything. This is the number one awareness tool to help you, especially with those aspects of your life that are just not really measurable, like your emotional state, like your mood, like your energy level. You have to know your scale inside out. This is your number one tool that will help you on so many levels. If you are on an emotional eating journey, the hunger scale might be your power tool. Or if you are on an emotional journey, the scale is equally powerful to you. So I just want to remind you of this power tool that definitely is available available to you right now. So let's practice. Let's take the scale and you rate yourself on a scale from 1 to 10. Where would you rate your current life situation? Your whole jar with all the challenges, accomplishments and dreams you have. So you have two options right now. Perspective number one, you can be truly grateful and say, yes, I am happy for everything I have. This gives me a new level of awareness that life actually is good. I am safe. It's actually not that bad. And perspective number two will really unlock possibilities for you and show you the power of good coaching and see what happens in your mind. So are you ready to play for a moment? What if this aid you just gave yourself is actually just a two? What? So you're essentially zooming out and unlocking a new sphere in your mental map. So how does this thought make you feel? Does it make you sad? Or does it inspire you? You get to choose how you want to feel about that. If we are shifting the focus, shifting perspective on that scale for you, this is what truly unlocks your possibilities. This really gives you a chance to actually flirt with your future and shift toward a room for growth. Because if you always see your current situation as an actually great aid, your limbic brain that's primed on survival will never get you out of your own cave to go for that 10. Because secretly you might be telling yourself we are already at an 8 and we still have half or two thirds of our lives in front of us, so we are not in a hurry. Just take a chill pill. This will never light that kind of fire under your derriere to actually go after that bigger dream that you secretly have inside of you. So allowing you this thought experiment of placing your actually great eight life on the two allows you to feel into this appreciating two on that scale towards a 10. And you can tell yourself, hey, if this is already a two, how will a three, four, five, six feel like? How audacious will a 10 be? So really allow yourself this space in your mind for a moment to truly unlock new ideas and a new space for growth for you. If you would have asked me, hey Lily, what is the number one thing 
that determines if you are successful with your endeavor to reach your goal and make it a reality, it is this, taking responsibility, taking full ownership about your decisions, what you're doing, what you're deciding, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, taking full responsibility. So what does it mean to take responsibility? All of us millennials, midlifers and late bloomers, we were all raised since kindergarten to follow someone else's instructions. Don't eat that, play with that, go to bed now, learn this, reach for these standards in life. This is how you're supposed to look, feel and act to fit in. All these predecisions are then after graduation being taken on by the media. Buy that, do that. And it literally fosters neural pathways that make you addicted to someone telling you how to feel and what to do. Then you're entering the workforce. As an intern, you rise the ranks. You try to be the best assistant, the best employee and best team leader ever. Until this little voice that's been growing in the back of your mind, that there is so much more out there for you, is taken over the show and you're ready to take action, to design your destiny to take full charge of what you are creating in your life and how your future will look like. So up until this point, let's say best case this happens in your 20s or 30s or maybe 40s, but at any point you spend 89% of your life in a truly dependent mode. And now you're dreaming of becoming your own boss and designing your own destiny. And now out of the blue, you and your body especially should know how to do that, what to do differently, what actually is the difference, how to eventually take full ownership and escape the victimhood and self-pity that you trained for decades before. So the percentage is just off. This is all that's happening, especially when you're first starting out or even in your first couple of years. Let's say like me, I've been 100% self-employed now for five years. So percentage wise, I'm not good at math, but let's say it's 88% of my time. My body is still infused with this old type of thinking, giving others responsibility for my decisions, blaming out of circumstances, blaming the system that I feel the way I'm feeling, blaming the job of not challenging me enough or challenging me too much. All that is all programming. Taking responsibility is the number one task on your to-do list. You have to take full responsibility of your thoughts, of your feelings, of your actions and of your results. You cannot blame anyone else anymore of what's happening. I hope you appreciate this kind of directness that I'm offering here to you. Because let me tell you again, hey, in my past years, I don't know how many courses, memberships and masterminds I did where this was never this explicitly said to me that I have to take full responsibility of my results. I cannot blame Facebook ads for not giving me the right leads. I cannot blame my audience for not picking me up on my office. I cannot blame my location of not reaching the right people. This is just not how it works anymore. So you have to take full responsibility. And I'm so happy that I can tell you this in this safe container that we're having here right now. Because you can also go out there and try to figure it out on your own and get beaten up by a negative self-talk until your body takes over and your health is suffering from this. Because this is totally available if you keep doing that. So thank you for being here, for holding this space with me for your future self to get comfortable with the idea of taking full responsibility. Are you owning your thoughts or are they owning you? And this is not about blaming because media and especially movies have been dictating us for decades that something happens outside which makes me feel something. It always is an outer circumstance that's triggering something in me, a helpless emotion. And you're essentially just victim of your inner emotional diva and you're never really 100% sure what's going to happen next. And I'm just offering you to explore a different reality where the opposite is true, that you full ownership that you are fully responsible of what you're thinking and what you are feeling which means that you can choose what you want to do which we will explore in future episodes but for now i just want to hold the space for you to get comfortable with this idea so this podcast is essentially a dating zone for you and your future self building your purpose-driven lifestyle so you don't have to decide anything yet you can of course but the point of this is that you will get comfortable with the idea that this might be the reason why you've been falling off the bandwagon so often in the past why you've been giving into your health challenges shortly before a big breakthrough why you stop yourself from even allowing yourself the idea that something bigger is possible and available to you. It's just because you might be afraid of disappointing yourself. 
We are so afraid of disappointing others and we hold that reason up front. But what we are most afraid of is disappointing ourselves. Because we have so many unhealed scars all the times where we took bold action, where we took responsibility, where we made the brave move and we fell flat on the face. And these wounds are not fully healed yet. So that's why so many who are already on their journey or are facing a new season in their business are actually just afraid of taking on full responsibility for themselves. And I can't lie to you, it is going to be uncomfortable. We are just afraid of getting uncomfortable by disappointing ourselves, by failure. But I want to offer you this thought, what if you are already uncomfortable? You are already uncomfortable with not taking action, so you might as well take ownership of the discomfort. Saying, hey, the discomfort is just part of the journey and I'm loving it. You can go as far as saying, hey, it might be even the proof that I'm on track if I'm feeling uncomfortable. This is the premium of thoughts. We don't have to get that just yet. But just saying, hey, I'm taking ownership of the full spectrum. I'm taking back ownership of my thinking, of my feeling and of my actions. You have to take on this ownership. Otherwise, we will never get forward. If everybody keeps blaming other people and other circumstances, we will just keep perpetuating the mess we're currently in. Imagine a world where everybody really is taking on their responsibility. Hey, I ate a lot of chunk food and I went to bed after midnight. So that's why I'm feeling like crap today. Nothing went wrong. The system is working. You're taking full ownership of your decisions, of your actions. So if you are ready to explore that reality, where this is true, that the ball really is in your corner, to pick it up, to make the next move, I want to offer you this. You can start with acknowledging and forgiving yourself of all the times where you failed yourself, where you disappointed yourself. You have to give yourself this kind of forgiveness. It's not about forgiving others. It's not about a big forgiveness ritual. It really is about forgiving yourself, telling yourself, hey, I'm sorry, past version of me, that I disappointed you. I'm sorry that I failed you. I'm sorry that I dropped the ball here. I'm sorry that I didn't continue to take massive action. I'm sorry that I missed so many opportunities of not serving. You're taking full ownership and you start by forgiving yourself. Just try it out. Give yourself a calm space or do it right now. Don't wait for a perfect setting. You can create that in your mind. You can close your eyes for a moment Envision yourself in the perfect setting. If it's for you looking out on the ocean at sunset with the calming soft music in the background and you can look your past version in the eye and just say, hey, I'm sorry for all the times I'm failing you. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I love you. And from now on, I am taking responsibility. It's not too late. We are just getting back on my rail tracks. Nothing went wrong. Yes, we might have lost a little time here, but the destination is the same. We will get there as soon as you really take on this responsibility. And here's a little caveat to that. Let me just tell you, there might be times where you might disappoint yourself again in the future, even after you've forgiven yourself right now. There might be circumstances where you are giving away your power to other circumstances, to other people, to the bad things that are happening. And this is okay. Always come back to acknowledging, getting back to the present moment and saying, okay, all we have is the present and the future. I don't have to perpetuate what I did in the past. I can re-decide today and recommit today that I am taking full responsibility of my future, of what I'm creating right now, of my destiny. Hey, this is such deep shit we're doing here right now. <laughs> I hope you appreciate the depth that we're doing this here. This whole podcast really can be a course in itself, but I'm giving you all this here for free because this is the fundamental first things that need to happen before you can even take massive action. So really soak that in. Come back to this episode whenever you feel you fell off the bandwagon again. It is okay. Just remember that you know how to get back on there. You are just human. I'm also human. We are allowed to be human sometimes. Just remember that you have the resources to get back on track. Hey, I believe in you. You got this. Trust that something major is shifting inside of you right now while you've been listening to this episode. Trust that something is clicking right now and let it sink in and let it absorb. And allow yourself to remind you daily, hey, I am in charge. I'm in 
full responsibility of the results I'm creating, of my feelings, of my thoughts. This is the best news ever because that means that you can literally create anything from that place. Hey, we are just getting started on this journey. I'm so excited that you're here with me. Thank you for holding the secret space today. You can also rewind a little bit to do that again with all the knowledge you've been getting right now and allow yourself to come back to this. Just remind yourself, hey, maybe this is the differentiator of me creating that desired future of mine or not. Maybe it is about this exact step, taking responsibility. And there is another metaphor that might help you with this. Imagine a stretch card, so a Rubbellos in German, and you have two numbers visible on that. And you frantically want to make sense of those two numbers. Combining them, you want to see what's out there. You see others having 10 numbers visible and you're questioning yourself. Why do I only have two? What's wrong with me? What am I missing? Giving those two numbers so much meaning. And then there comes a coach into your life and hands you a coin and says, here you go. Scratch free those other eight numbers. And now let's talk. Once you see what actually is possible for you, this will get your juices flowing. So you can ask yourself right now, what would help me right now to scratch that next number, to get on a level three, level four, level five? What would be different there? What would I be doing that I'm currently not doing? What will get me towards that next level? This is the power of real coaching, to have a space where you allow yourself to dream and explore new perspective. And even holding a space for what if you scratch that tenth number and have all those numbers in front of you and now we can play and now we can make sense and craft a path that really gets you where you actually want to go and gets you moving and lights that fire inside you to do whatever it takes. How would that future look like? I truly cannot wait to see what this new level 10 life has in store for you. Are you allowing yourself these kinds of thought experiments? What comes up for you? Hey, I hope this impulse today really got your juices going and you see how you can truly unlock your possibilities and become an example of actually what's possible, not only for your closest surroundings, but truly for your community that might be still out there, for those people you actually want to help. You want to make a difference and I believe in you too. You got this. You got the key to unlock those possibilities for you. Now get a coin, scratch those numbers, and I cannot wait to see what you come up with. Hey, if you liked today's episode, please make a screenshot of that episode. Tag me on Instagram at lilybeyond, and I'd love to hear. Write me, what was your main takeaway from today? What was your favorite metaphor? I offered you a couple. What are you taking away? Use it to help people see the power of coaching. Because once you truly embody that unlocked possibility, you inspire others to do the same. Ready to deprogram your self-sabotaging patterns? The Mental Fitness Starter Training is open right now for enrollment. Once you are rewired and inspired, the real fun begins. Go to mentalfitnessschool.com to join class today. Thanks for listening and see you in class.